three things, footwork, handwork, eye work. Uh, on the eye work, as I told you, there is what, where, and when. Okay. In my opinion, the easiest thing to teach is footwork. Okay. And the hardest thing to teach is eye work. Okay. So these should be the, the sequence. We, we take a look at the right technique for swim block. Okay. And then we will start uh, talking more about the system. And then we will go with drills. Can I have two of you here, guys? Two of you here, demonstrating blocking. OK, so starting with the starting position. OK, can one of you face that direction? Yes. This direction? Yeah, perfect. And one of you facing this direction. So you can see on both angles. OK, so our starting position should be with our feet a little bit wider than our shoulders. OK, perfect. Loose. OK, so the idea of uh, being relaxed when you're starting, and the fact that if you're relaxed, you need less time to react is something that now in sport is pretty common. Okay. We, we want to drop, so like sink. Okay. So we should have uh, our, our uh, heels, our hips okay, on top of our heels and our knees here. Okay. Shoulder up. There are a lot of situations in which, you know, there are a lot of variation, a lot of version. Uh, if you ask the different coaches, hands here, hands here, hands here, okay? The, the idea that I have in my mind is that I want to start with my hands at the lower part uh, of the net. So here, okay, low, okay? I would love to start here, okay? Because this position gives you the chance to start quicker on the, on the sides. My only concern is that when you're close to the net, okay, most of all with young players, if you start from here, there's this big issue of bringing the net up with you. So the idea of having my hands here, give me anyway the right distance, give me the chance to be sure that I will be sure, will be almost sure that I will not touch the net when I jump, okay, but at the same time, give me freedom to move left and right. We don't need to start here. Okay, it's proved that between this position and jump, okay, and this position and jump to reach the top of the net, there is between 0.01 and 0.03 seconds of difference. Okay, so it's minimal. This idea of keeping your hands up, I think that is already forgotten. Uh, because from here, there is no one, most of all on the women's side, I, and no, just few things about men volleyball, but on the women's side, there is no one that from here is able to perform and jump. Everyone, if want to jump, has to come down and then go up again. So it makes no sense. Okay, so if, if we are talking about an in-system situation, keeping your hands down, in my opinion, give you the chance to be free to jump in case there's a fastball with a middle blocker, but at the same time, give you freedom to move left or right. That is the thing that create more issues. OK, when do we want to do? Um, you're still here in the sync position. Thanks, guys. Uh, so when do you want to do this sync position? We will see it uh, with a setter. But the idea is that you sync when the ball is getting, is almost in the hand of the setter. In this way, you have a continuous movement. So you go down and you sync, OK, your hands here, and from here, or you react and jump in case there's a, there's a ball with a middle blocker, or you're ready to go left and right for the, for the pins. OK, so this idea of starting here, sink when the ball is almost in the hand of the setter, and then from here I react. What happens if the ball is out of system? From here, I drop. OK, so same thing, same idea of sinking with my legs. OK, but my hands can be here, loose, ready to move. OK. We take a look at our first step. Um, can you take a first step like you want to move to your right? Uh, perfect. Can you do it again? Like imagine that from here. So the idea that we give is that we want to sprint in that direction. So forget about volleyball, forget about everything, just sprint. Okay. If you want to sprint, one thing that you cannot do, just take a step and remain with your body weight here. Okay. So if I want to sprint in that direction, if you just think about pictures that you see about sprinter, 
okay, in track and field, is that they modify their body weight. Okay, so from here, whatever, however you take that step, okay, you change to have your body weight on this foot. So to create a sort of single line that starts from your foot, goes up to your hips, goes up to your shoulder, okay, and these, this line and this body weight here, okay, give me the chance to be aggressive with the second and third step. But it's not the first step that makes the difference. It's not the first step that is, one, is the one that make me go farther, okay? It's not the one that covers distance, okay? It makes me go far, farther for the way I prepare my body for the second and third step, okay? So the idea is that no matter, there are players that use a negative step, like this. Okay, so they move both their feet, one negative, one positive. Okay, players that move a, one, just one step, so the one in the direction where I'm going. Okay, there are players that do different things, a split. Okay, but the idea is that I have to get as fast as I can in this position. Okay, foot parallel to the net, so I create a line. I don't want anything. So if this is the net, I don't want anything like this. I want to create a lane, a line, okay, where I can move. So I turn 90 degrees, and I change my foot and my body weight to be in that direction. Can you do it as fast as you can? So from here, yes, okay, hands down. Okay, so from here, my hands don't go up, okay, but they help me moving my body weight here. Okay, so the best way is drop me my hands, and my hands just help my body weight to go in the right spot. So on this foot with my shoulder in front of this knee, okay? That release this foot and gives me the chance to push in that direction. Okay, you analyze the last thing, and then I will let you guys start trying. Okay, so from here, I'm in this position, hands down. I'm ready to get a second and third step deeper and then to jump, okay? Second and third step deeper, I ask my player to keep the internal foot 45 degrees, okay, from the net, okay? And then close with the external one, almost being frontal, okay? But when I take off, I'm still facing the hitter. When I'm over the net, I will face the, the end line. Mm. Uh, on the contrary, on the second and third step, so the second step is the one that gives me verticality, that permits me to jump high instead of, uh, how do you say? Wait. Yeah, to fly outside. Yeah, that thing. Okay, so while the first step should be here with my body weight here, it's important that the second and third have the foot in front. So I have the foot that is closer to the sideline okay, than my upper body. Okay, this is the thing that makes my jump vertical. Okay, then obviously I can help myself with the external foot. So there are a lot of coaches uh, that say, you know, if you, if you push on your, on your thumb, on your first finger, like you wanna move back in again. Okay, so this idea of using the internal part of my external foot, so if I'm moving to the right, the internal part of my right foot, to push in, yeah, that's great. But what gives you verticality, okay, is the fact that you're placing your foot, your internal foot, so the cross one, farther than my upper body. This gives verticality, okay? In the same way then, this on the first step, give me the chance to run as fast as, as I can to the to the hitting uh, point. So from here, okay, up and hands over, okay. How do we swing? There are two ways to swing, okay. I, I don't like this thing, this thing of keeping your hands here, okay. They're slow. You don't gain anything both in uh, air time or penetration, so it makes no sense. There are two techniques that internationally are used more than others, okay? One is the chicken wings. So the idea that you start with your, with your elbow bended uh, and you finish with your elbow bended. So in every single part of your movement, you always have uh, this angle. So you cross, close, and then you go up again, okay? As well as you have players that swing their arms extended, okay? So with, with a big swing, hands back, okay? It's great. I don't mind, I like both, 
okay, the main thing is that if we use this technique, it's important that in the moment we recall them, so we bring them in front, and we are taking off, they're bended again. Okay, this thing is proved. There are some studies that they did here in the US that the swim block is about seven to nine percent. Uh, it gives you seven to nine percent more elevation and more hand penetration if you swing back. Okay, but it brings with it some cons, like you know the fact that anyway the risk is that from here you will jump and go lateral instead of moving your hand forward and in right away. Okay, so these are things that you have to consider when you when you go in one direction or in the other one.